Well, hello, I'm Karen McDermade Rolf, Independent Advisor with Creative Memories, and I am back for my monthly technique challenge and layout. Each month, I feature a technique and a layout, and I challenge all of you to use the technique to create a layout and share it with me in my Facebook group, Karen's Croppers, for an entry into my monthly door prize drawing. So I am back for the new year. It's 2023 and we have a fresh start with some fresh ideas for the new year. This is going to be my Technique Tuesday number 43 post. So when you join me at Karen's Croppers, go to the album section. That's the albums in Karen's Croppers. And you will find that this is the 43rd technique album that I have in Karen's Croppers. So there's a wealth of um, resources and ideas right there in that library. In addition to the technique albums, there's also other albums that feature other scrapbooking ideas. So it's a great reference library with lots of great scrapping ideas for you. And you can also find more layout ideas on my blog at karencrops.com. And I so appreciate any of your purchases through my Creative Memories website link at creativememories.com backslash user backslash Karen, and it's Karen with a Y. And I offer a generous customer rewards program that's starting fresh now for the new year. So let's take a look at the what I'm going to create today with all of you. First of all, I am going to be using papers from our Vivid Melodies collection. So Vivid Melodies is made up, it comprises four different um, paper packs with their corresponding embellishments. And the nice thing about all of these four is they all coordinate. So we have the lime tart, the jazzberry, the butterscotch, and the capri blue. And if you look closely at all of these, you'll see that the same patterns are included in each of the paper packs. So just in a different color, but it's the same patterns. And since the color tones are consistent across the four packs, you can mix and match really easily. You'll, you are assured that the papers in these four packs are all going to coordinate with each other. So you can pair them up, in, you know, in twos or threes, or use all four together. And I'm going to be using all four together. And I've selected four sheets of paper, one from each of those packs that have the same pattern on it. So you can see I have the same pattern. Now when you do this technique, you can select however you like. You could only use one sheet of paper if you like and do it all in one color. Or you could do it in two colors or three or four like I'm doing. So you have a lot of choices. You're also going to need a sheet of paper for your background or cardstock. And I'm going to do something a little different today. I'm going to highlight and use a sheet of our Creative Memories lined paper. We have lined paper in white, natural, and Spargo colors. Those colors match our album pages. So I have a sheet of the white lined paper. And the back side of the lined papers are blank, too. So typically what we'll do with the lined paper is, you know, cut it into shapes, pieces that we use for journaling boxes on our layouts. But today I'm going to use it as the background for my layout. I'm also going to be using our new Damask Flourish, Flourish, Damask Flourish Frame Punch. Now, if you don't have this border punch yet, it's one of our new ones, you can use substitute one that is similar in that you want a unique shape like this. And you'll see that as I start to cut apart my border. So a few other ones that can make a good substitute would be the dollop arch here. Now this dollop um, border frame punch, it's a little smaller in scale. So you would be cutting apart in between each of these little ones. So you might adapt your sizing for that smaller scale. And then here's a couple of the other current ones that we have right now that have a, a definitive shape, the geometric frame and then the mandala um, frame also. Okay, So just some ideas for substitutions. Let me demonstrate this frame punch for you. The frame punches are great because you can do several things with them. They're so versatile. So as the name implies, you can cut a frame. 
The thing to remember when punching frames is that you want it to be in even increments. So for right now, for this demonstration, I have a six inch by six inch square. So you could do it with a 12 by 12 square, a 10 by 10, an eight by eight, a four by four. You get the idea. But you can also do it in rectangular shapes, just as long as, again, that they are even increments, such as six by eight, eight by 10, okay? So this is a six by six square and we've opened up the punch. And typically when we punch borders with our border punches, we start at the black line here on the, the front of the punch. This time, we're gonna start at the silver line that's on the tray of the punch. So there's a silver line on each side. So that is where you line up the edge of your paper, the top edge of your paper to start punching. You see there where I've, I've inserted my paper right there? So I have the paper at the line and I'm going to punch. I'm gonna pull it through and I'm gonna do pattern matching. So I'm gonna match the pattern that we punched with the pattern that's imprinted on the tray of the punch. So see, it covers it up. So my punched piece is covering up what's printed on the tray and that's when I know to punch. Now I've come to the edge here and I'm gonna give it a turn and I'm gonna be looking at the top edge of that little piece right there and I'm lining that up again on that silver line. And that's how we're gonna punch the corners of our frames. I'm pulling it through, I'm pattern matching. I'm going to turn it and again, line that little top piece with the silver line. Punch again. And then one last time. And look at what a beautiful, beautiful piece that this creates. So you can imagine those and all of the different sizes that I mentioned, you know, using a 12 by 12 sheet, you can cut around the perimeter or punch around the perimeter of an entire sheet of cardstock or designer paper, or you can create these pretty little shapes, you know, which are beautiful here. You could, um, I would cut a photo into a circular shape using our custom cutting system and place it right in the frame. You could also, cut your photo down to four by four square and insert it on the frame. You could make this a journaling piece. You could layer it up with embellishments and stickers to make a, a decorative element with it. Or you can cut it apart and do some fun things with the, with the frames. But we don't need to use the, the frame punches just for frames. We can use them to punch borders also. So that's what we're going to do today. We're gonna to punch borders. So I'm gonna use a sheet here of the green paper and let me demonstrate how you punch a border using our border punches. Again, I mentioned the black lines on the front. So I'm going to line up the top edge of my paper with the little black line. So it's lined up and I'm going to punch. And then I'm gonna pull through and I'm going to do that pattern matching that I talked about earlier. And I'm gonna punch a border. So you can leave it on your page or your paper and use it just like that. Let's see, let's get some light behind it to show how lovely that is. Isn't that pretty? So you could use it like this. You could cut it off of your paper and create borders with it. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to cut it off and make borders. So we're going to punch um, from our papers. Let's see, one border from each color. So I've already punched here. I've gotten a head start um, from the yellow, the butterscotch, and the jazzberry. So now I've got this capri blue. And also when I'm punching, I'm being careful about my pattern. So it's, I have the pattern situated in the same direction for each of the borders that I punch. So I'm gonna punch one with the blue now, lining it up with that black line, pulling it through and pattern matching. I'm going to set 
this, whoops. Let me grab that. <laughs> that slid right across the room on me. So this is the second border that I cut from the green paper. So from one of your colors, you will need to punch two. So this is the second one. I'm just gonna set that aside for now. We're gonna come back. But we've got four borders that we punched, one from each color. And then after you punch them, you're going to cut them off of the paper at three inches. So I'm going to arrange the tips here of the punched pieces at three inches on my trimmer. And I'm looking at the vertical line going down, making sure all these points are at the three inch line so it's straight. And then I'm cutting it at three inches. So I did that with all four. So one border from each of the four colors I cut off at three inches. I need my trimmer. So now we're going to do a little measuring. Let me sit down for this part so I can get up close and see better. I'm going to use a pencil and I've got a little ruler here that's going to help me. And I'm going to work on the back side so I don't make any pencil marks on my border. And I've got my ruler and I'm looking just at where, you know, roughly as accurate as possible is the center of that punched decoration there, that punched pattern. So I'm looking at each one individually and I'm looking at where the middle of that would be and I'm making a line down there at the bottom. So I've got, you know, if I have my ruler up here, there's the top, comes all the way down. And then this last one again at the top, all the way down, okay? So I have little marks at where the centers would be of each of the punched pieces. Now I'm gonna take my trimmer again and we're gonna cut it into some triangles. So we're going to insert it on the trimmer. We know the dashed cutting line on the left is where the blade is going to cut. So we want this top edge here, this very edge of the border on the dash cutting line. And I also want my pencil line on the dash cutting line. So I get an angle and then I'm going to cut. Now I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna look at right in between these pieces. So right in the center of those two punched patterns is what I'm going to place on the dash cutting line. You know, try to be as accurate as possible. I didn't, didn't make a mark, I'm just eyeballing it. So right there's the center, there's the dash line, and my pencil line again is on the dash line also. So when I cut, I get the little triangle pieces, okay? So now I'm going to turn it on its side the other way. I'm looking right here at the edge, is on the dash cutting line, and my pencil is on the dash cutting line. And I'm gonna turn it this way, and I have my pencil line on the dash cutting line, and I have right in between those patterns, are also on the dash cutting line. And I get another triangle. And then I'm just going to do that all the way down the border. So again, putting the pencil line on the dash cutting line and putting that area that's right in between the punched patterns also on that dash cutting line to make triangles. Just take your time, just kind of, you know, measure twice, cut once, just kind of give it a look. Hold it down as you're cutting so it doesn't slide or slip on you. And then for the last one, I'm just gonna to go to the edge of the border. And then the edge. There we go. So you're gonna do that with all four of your border pieces, okay? So you can see why I got a head start on that. <laughs> it would take a lot of time on the video for, for me to, to punch and cut off all four. So I have already done that, and I have some in the other colors already cut, okay? So I'm gonna take my background piece now. This will be the background of the layout, as I mentioned. 
I liked the white background because we have so much color here. We have the four colors. I really did not want to introduce another color as a background, but you certainly could if you like. I would do something soft, neutral, and, and get some nice contrast from these pieces because you really, I really like how this contrast between the white and these pretty bright colors, you know, really highlight the pattern of the punch pieces. And I thought the lines, I, it just kind of gives some additional interest to that background. Instead of being a stark white, plain white, we've got the, um, the stripes that gives it a little bit of pattern. So I really like that look. I'm gonna take my big ruler here and I'm gonna kind of very lightly mark the halfway point, the six inches. So that's the center, and that's that's gonna be where I'm going to need to kind of start from. So we'll assemble this from the center out, okay? So we do have to think about oh I guess it doesn't matter the pattern that you want of which colors you want to be next to each other. So we're going to start just thinking how this is going to work out. I think it has to be, I'm taking the two pieces that'll be in the center and I'm kind of guessing on where they should be. I'm not gonna tape it right now. I'm gonna lay it out in case I need to scooch it over a little bit, okay? And you can see I'm leaving a little bit of space in between my triangle pieces. Oh, about an eighth of an inch or so, just a small amount. And then I'm gonna alternate. Some are gonna be up, and then the next one will be down. So that's, I think it needs to come over a little bit. And once I get the other pieces laid out, it'll be more evident. for these corner pieces. So this worked out fairly well. I think maybe I'm gonna adjust what I said and not really worry about that center mark. Instead, when you just start at one edge, just start with one of your triangles there at the edge. You see those two ends and points there? And then work, work that way. And like I said, I like to lay it all out, kind of get my spacing um, right before I start taping. Now you'll see we have these um, spaces here. So you need to take one of your, your triangles and cut it right in half, okay? So here is my triangle and I cut it right in half. And let's see. So this one's going to go this way. But I am going to need to cut another one because the next color here is green, right, in my pattern. Oh, I've messed up my pattern. There we go. So now the next one is going to be the, the jazzberry color. So I'm gonna cut this jazzberry in half. To cut it in half, I'm gonna use the personal trimmer. I think it's a little easier when you're doing kind of a single piece like this. I can be a little bit more accurate. There we go. So then when I have those on the ends, I might have to just do a little bit of scooching again to get that spacing right. But there, and now we're gonna have it probably I need to count them out, but probably enough pieces to go ahead and make a double page from this. So you can continue that on a second page. Now, if you recall from the green, I cut, I punched a second border, and I thought that I would use that across the top 
is a element here on my layout. So I'm going to, well, hopefully I won't, hopefully I won't move those. Let me see here on my little tester piece how big I made this. I made this an inch and three quarters. So if we put the points there, the points of the punch pieces at an inch and three quarters, an inch and three quarters cut, okay? So that's an inch and three quarters. And you could have used any color that you like for this top piece, I just chose the green. I did keep it a little narrow since this border um, down here is so wide. And then we're going to, you know, we can cut some photo mats to, to go on there. I'm thinking maybe the blue. And I'm going to take a, from the blue paper, I think, I'm going to cut a strip at four inches. And I'm going to turn it on its side and cut it at six inches to get, to get two photo mats that are four by six. Stopped cutting there before it got to the top. There we go. I'll just have to crop my photos a little smidge to fit in the, the four by six photo mats. It's gonna be looking something like this. So let me pause the video now while I take um, a few minutes to tape down all of these little pieces and then I will hop back on and show you how I finish the layout. Alrighty, I am back. I have most of my layout adhered, but before I did that, I wanted to show you a few elements, namely our repositional tape runner adhesive. This is our Creative Memories tape runner. And we have different kinds of tape refills that you can purchase and insert. They're interchangeable here into the cartridge. And the one here with the green um, casing is our repositional tape. And this is a real game changer for us in scrapbooking. This repositional tape comes out as clear little dots. So you might be looking at this border piece and say, wow, that's really intricate. How are you gonna get adhesive on this with all of those intricate details? Well, that's why we use the repositional tape. Um, let me get a little, here's a little scrap paper here I'm gonna he, he, um, use as a backing. So when I lay this adhesive down, there'll be a little bit of extra that goes through on my table and I didn't want it on my table. You can see how I'm just, I'm going along the edges and then I'm going over these cutout spaces. And then there's a little bit there that got on that, that scrap paper. And now I'm going to be able to adhere it down. So let me just do that to the top edge here of the layout. And then I'm going to press it. And then there'll be spots where these clear little adhesive dots come through the openings. So I'm just going to rub that out, brush it away. And then also being that it's repositional means that we can move it when we place it down. And I did, when I was placing my pieces here with my little spacing, I got off a little bit. So I used our multi-purpose tool from Creative Memories and I just kind of ran it under the piece to pull it up gently because it's intricate. And see how I pulled it right up? And now I can reposition it and adhere it back down so this is a real game changer for us. I gave a, I did a presentation, made a layout with a group virtually over New Year's Eve, and there were many um, scrapbookers on in that event who had not seen our repositional tape, and they were just really blown away by it and thought that it was a great, like I said, a game changer for so many reasons. It makes it easy to adhere intricate pieces that's got a lot of cutout openings, and it's great that you're able to reposition and move it if, if you put something down crooked and you need to fix it. Now, over time, the repositional tape will get more tacky instead of less tacky. So it is considered a permanent adhesive. And like I said, over time, 
it'll get more tacky, but you should still be able to um, get it off. And I had moved some borders around that I had taped to a display board a year ago. And then I wanted to take those borders off my display and use them on layouts. And I was able to get them off, you know, using my multi-purpose tool here, but it took some time. It did tear the display board a little bit. I was able to get them up. So you can see that, like I said, over time, it becomes more tacky. And then I also wanted to kind of highlight our Creative Memories foam squares to give dimension to the layout. So I have this, this big, beautiful um, flower embellishment that I wanted to lay. So I'm gonna just put some foam squares around it kind of fill it up with the big ones, but I'll use some of these small ones for the, the outlying leaves here around the edges. That way my, my embellishment piece will lie nice and flat, give it some great pop, some great dimension. And then we just peel the backings off. I'm woefully behind on uploading and printing photos, so I don't have any photos earmarked yet for this layout. But I'm gonna kind of go like this a little bit. So it's gonna overlap the mat, but when I when I put my photo in, I'll be able to tuck my photo right under there. So it'll overlap the mat a little bit. It overlaps the border a little bit. And I had already adhered a flower and a leaf embellishment down here. So now I need to kind of make that visual triangle of the embellishments and thought I would need a little embellishment up here. So I have this little blue title that's part of the, the Capri Blue um, embellishments. But I don't like this little stripe mark on it. To me, it looks a little sporty or something. And this page is, is not sporty, it's more elegant. So I'm going to um, trim that off using my personal trimmer here. There we go. And I just um, trimmed the little striped piece off now. So now this looks a little bit more formal. And again, I think I'm going to use some foam squares. And I've got a nice even distribution there. And I'm going to layer it so it kind of goes over this photo mat a little bit. And I'm going to butt it up right to the edge. Now again, when I put my when I'm ready to put my photo on there, I'm going to have to use my multi-purpose tool. And I wish I had cleaned it before I started this video. You can see it's kind of gunked up there with adhesive because I use it a lot. So anyway, I would just pry this up a little bit. I'll be able to pry gently, gently to get those foam squares up just enough to slide my photo underneath and then that embellishment can go over it. And now since the paper is lined, I have space right here to do my journaling. So won't that look really nice? I'm really um, tickled with how this turned out. I love this lined uh, paper as the background so I could do the journaling. And I just thought this just made such a pretty layout. It's so beautiful. This Damask Flourish um, frame punch, I think is one of our most beautiful punches that we've ever had. I mean, it's just gorgeous. So if you have some elegant layouts to make, some wedding layouts, heritage layouts, some, you know, old family historical photos, this would just be beautiful, you know, if you just like pretty pages. And it doesn't really need to be too formal. You know, I've used these bright colors. So, you know, it's not overly formal because I think the bright colors adds kind of a, a fun dimension to it. So please use this technique, and like I said, share it with me on Facebook and my group at Karen's Croppers. I would love to see your version of it. I would love to see it done in other papers. I would love to see it maybe done with one of the other tools that I'd mentioned as a substitute. If you like my layouts and the way that um, I teach, I invite all of you to join me and my friends at Creative Life Scrapbooking for our January 27th PJ party. Our PJ parties are something we've been doing for years now. Um, well, maybe a good five or six years. Um, we went virtual a couple years ago. And we do, um, there's a live portion of the PJ party for as a virtual crop. We run on Zoom. So there's seven Creative Memory Advisor designers on our creative life scrapbooking team. We have some great talent on this team, some of the some of the best designers that we have here with Creative Memories. And 
they'll be featured during the PJ Party virtual crop. So five of the seven will go live on Zoom. Those Zoom sessions will be recorded and then they'll be shared in a private Facebook group for the event. So if you can't be live on the 27th with us, you'll still have access to that private Facebook group where you can view the recordings. The other two team members um, we'll record, uh, we'll pre-record a layout, make a layout and do a recording that will also be shared in that private group. So for your fee, you're going to get seven double page layouts. They're all gonna be double page layouts. They're all designed to hold several photos. So you can get a lot of, you know, good number of photos on the layouts. And they're also designed to be versatile. For instance, if you don't have the exact punch that we use, we make um, substitution ideas and we, we design them purposely so you can substitute with, with other tools. And we don't require any type of supply list. Um, use your stash, use the papers that you already have in your, in your stash. And like I said, the layouts will be versatile, so you'll be able to adapt them. One of the great things about the PJ Party, and one of the things that, that we enjoy the most, well, we love interacting with everyone on Zoom. We get to see you and interact one-on-one. -on -one. But in that private Facebook group for the PJ Party, we invite everyone to share the layouts that they make, their versions of our layouts. So in that group, we'll see hundreds of examples of our layouts. And it's just so fun seeing, again, all the ways that all of you take our ideas and adapt them, use different materials, put your own twist on them. So we all get so inspired and we get other ideas to make more layouts. So that happens for the entire month after the PJ party. So February, there'll be a lot of sharing happening. We do um, ask though that the layouts are not shared anywhere else on social media because they're exclusive layouts that you get for your fee for the event. So we do ask that you only share them with us in the event group and otherwise keep those private because like I said, that's what you're getting for your fee. We do have printable handouts for all of the layouts too. So, you know, we know that lots of people like the written handout to follow along, some like the video so you can have the demonstration and, and hear the instructions. So it's just a really great event. You can register for our PJ party at our website at Creative Life Scrapbooking. Dot com. Again, that's creativelifescrapbooking.com. And right now during this month, we have a special combo option at a discount. We do four PJ parties a year, one each quarter, one each, each season. And you can um, you know, sign up individually for each one. Or you can purchase the combo at a discounted rate. So you can sign up ahead of time for all four PJ parties for the year. That way you know you're signed up ahead of time. You don't have to remember to sign up for the next one. And you get it at a discounted price. So I would recommend that you're to do that combo if you're able. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for visiting with me today. I hope you like this layout. And I hope you give it a try and make it.